All right, here we go. Brand new Flyers Daily for the 24th of February, 2024. Flyers Daily presented by Ticketmaster. Make more memories live. Flyers uh, will be back in action today, coming up at 3 o'clock at Wells Fargo Center. Returning after a kind of scattered three-game road trip that saw them in Toronto lose that game 4-3 to three in overtime, uh, lose the stadium series game 6-3 to three against the New Jersey Devils at MetLife on Saturday, and then win the final game 3-1 to one over the Chicago Blackhawks on Wednesday. And back at it today uh, for a couple of Metro Division games this weekend. Metro Division matinee weekend is what I'm calling it. Uh, say that five times fast. It'll be the New York Rangers today and the Pittsburgh Penguins on the road tomorrow. Today at 3, tomorrow at 3.30. Busy, busy weekend. An incredibly important weekend of Flyers hockey uh, on tap. And we're going to look at this matchup against the New York Rangers. We'll take a look at Pittsburgh coming up tomorrow, what is a pivotal game for the Penguins as well. There's some desperation in there. And when you look at uh, the game this afternoon, Flyers-Rangers, these two teams have only played one time so far this season. Uh, they've got some more games coming up, uh, as I mentioned, today at 3 o'clock. And then uh, coming up, uh, they'll see the Rangers again in the month of March. They'll see uh, the Rangers at Madison Square Garden on the 26th of March. And then in the final week of the season, also at Madison Square Garden, uh, the Rangers on Thursday, April 11th. The one game that they did play earlier this season was a 3-1 Ranger win at Wells Fargo Center. The one thing that sticks out from that game to me was the one giveaway right off the defensive zone draw. I think it was Travis Sanheim tried to hit the winger up the right side after after a uh, left side of the ice draw, and Chris Kreider threw a stick out and was able to knock it down and get a great scoring chance and convert it. Um, that's, I do remember that play specifically, but these two teams uh, have only played the one time so far this year, and we'll see them a good amount here in the latter stages. And the Flyers are getting a team today in the Rangers that is playing tremendous right now. They've won nine straight games and they sit right now atop the NHL standings with the best points percentage in the entire league. It's 0.693. Their record is 57 games, 38, 16 and three again, 0.693 points percentage. Number two in the league is Boston at 0.690 Florida at 0.684 Vancouver now at 0.678, Flyers 14th in the NHL when it comes to points percentage at 0.588. Um, so the Rangers, uh, you know, top of the heap right now. I think the Flyers this year, I, I don't know how it is for other teams. I, I don't look at it kind of game by game like this, but I think this is the fifth time this season the Flyers have taken on an opponent. And at the time they took them on, they were the highest points percentage team in the NHL. I think it happened with Vancouver, not once, but twice. I think it happened. It did happen with Winnipeg. I think it happened earlier this year with the Rangers, and it may have happened with Boston as well. Uh, so, uh, and the Flyers have fared decently in some of those games. They obviously swept Winnipeg. They swept Vancouver. Uh, they lost to the Rangers in their only uh, game against them. They lost to Boston in their only game against them, and they've beaten the Florida Panthers. So it's pretty crazy how they've done against some of the top teams in the NHL. Um, you come into this game tonight, too. You look at uh, this Ranger team, and when it comes to goals four in the NHL, uh, they're, they're not at the top of the heap. They're just a good team all around. Eighth in goals four at 3.37 goals per game. Goals allowed. You think of Shesterkin, they got to be great. Well, it's actually been the guy that's been better has been quick this season, doesn't play as much. Uh, but the new or the uh, New York Rangers, when it comes to goals allowed per games played, six in the NHL at two point seven four. I would assume today it's going to be Shostak, and it could be Quick today. We could see Jonathan Quick. Uh, Quick's played in twenty games this season. He's got a record of thirteen four and two, a two three six goals against average, and a nine seventeen save percentage. Those numbers are better than Shostak, who threw thirty seven games, twenty four twelve and one. 275 goals against average and a 907 save percentage. He's got good numbers, uh, but not as good as Jonathan Quick. So we'll see who it is today. And when you're facing those two guys, far different in how you have to attack them. 
with Igor Shosturkin, you do not want to dump pucks in, put rims behind the net that he can get to because he will play the puck and start breakouts. He is a major asset in the way he handles the puck back there. Jonathan Quick, not so much. Quick's a lot different in the way you put traffic around Quick um, than you do Igor Shosturkin. Um, but all said and done, Igor Shosturkin has played against the Flyers 10 times in his career. He's got a record of 6-3-1 and one against the Flyers, a 2.08 goals against average, and a 936 save percentage. So if they go on historical numbers, Shesterkin is going to get the start. We'll see how that plays out. And one of the things we've talked about of late as well, when I put together the the, the eight things that the, that the Flyers need to do to realize a playoff spot, they sit there right now with that 78.9% chance to make the playoffs according to uh, Money Puck. But what they got to do to realize that is they've got to control the opposition star players. And we've talked about from Nathan McKinnick and Nikita Kucherov and David Pasternak and Austin Matthews and others, how they've kind of touched the Flyers up pretty recently. So I went back and I looked at the three key offensive players for the New York Rangers, Mika Zibanejad, uh, Artemi Panarin, and Chris Kreider, how those players have fared against the Flyers over I didn't do it over their whole career because, you know, Zabanajad's 31, just about 32. Panarin is 32. Kreider, uh, 32 as well. So they're not young guys, and there's a, a lot there. So I decided to look a little bit more focused over the last five, six seasons, or five seasons, four seasons, something like that. So for Mika Zabanajad, it feels like he has destroyed the Flyers for decades at this point. I have PTSD from Mika Zabanajad. But over the last five seasons, going back to 1920, until now, including the one game this year, that's 42 games or, or 42 games over his career that he's played against the Fires, 18 goals, 17 assists, and 35 points. Good numbers, not spectacular numbers. But starting in 1920 and three games against the Flyers that year, he had th- uh, two goals and an assist and three points. Nothing great. That's the shortened season. We head into the next year where they played the Flyers eight times. This is the uh, when they had the just divisional play and you played the seven other teams in your division eight times, 56 game season. In those eight games that year, Zabadajad did feast. Seven goals, 11 assists, 18 points in those eight games. The next year in 21 22, four games, two goals and an assist, three points. 22 um, 23 that season, three games, one goal, three assists for four points. And this year, he had uh, in the one game, two goals in that game for two points, no assists. Artemi Panarin. Uh, go back to the 21, uh, first of all, overall in his career, from Blackhawk to Columbus Blue Jacket to New York Rangers, he's played the Flyers 30 times. He's got 40 points, 13 goals, 27 assists. In 21-22 in seven games, three goals, seven assists, 10 points. Four games in 21-22, three goals, four assists, seven points. A goal and two assists in the 22-23 season for three points in, in the first game this year. Did a good job against Artemi Panarin. He got nothing. He had no goals, no assists. Chris Kreider has played against the Flyers 40 times in his career. He's got 26 points, 17 of them goals. Eight games in the 2021 season, four goals to assist for six points. Two goals in 21-22, just two points. Two goals in 22-23, just two points. And this year he had two a goal and an assist in that game in Philadelphia uh, for two points. So he hasn't gotten the Flyers too bad. But those are three key guys, key guys, that the Flyers got to limit the damage that can be done coming up today at Wells Fargo Center. Absolutely. And throw Shesterkin in there if he's in net or Jonathan Quick, whoever the goaltender may be, because uh, this is a team that is on a nine-game heater right now. Peter LaViolette got his team going pretty good out of the gate, but they're playing probably their best hockey of the season right now. It's funny because before their nine game win streak, they had lost five uh, or four of their last five, but now nine and zero in their last 10. And over those last nine games, they've scored 39 goals for, so they're scoring over four goals per game. They've only given up 18, only giving up exactly an average of two goals per game. Uh, in that period, they've got five power play goals on 30 uh, attempts, and they're just, they're just getting it done and winning in a variety of different ways. They beat Ottawa seven to two on the road to start it, the nine game trip or nine game streak. They beat Colorado at home two to one in overtime. They beat Tampa Bay at home three to one. 
They beat the Chicago Blackhawks in overtime 4-3 to on the road. They beat Calgary 2-0. They beat Montreal 7-4, to so they have multiple games where they scored a touchdown at an extra point. Also scored six against the New York Islanders. That was the stadium series game in overtime. They beat the Dallas Stars this past week, who are a real good team and a legit cup contender. They beat them 3-1, to and then they beat the Devils in their last game uh, coming up yet, uh, two days ago, 5-1. to So, look, they're putting up a lot of goals. They're keeping the puck out of their net. They've won nine straight. Flyers can prevent them from getting to double digits in a 10-game win streak coming up this afternoon. Not going to be an easy task. I think the environment today is going to be electric at Wells Fargo. You know, we go back a couple of years to when, you know, the Flyers are playing out the string and, and the Ranger fans absolutely took over the building. And it was it was a low point for a lot of us that watch the game, watch the team, follow the team, or fans of the team, whatever you want to call it to see them take over that building in the way they did. Now, they're, I got news for you. There are going to be Ranger fans there today because it's cheaper for Ranger fans to go on the open market, buy tickets to a game in Philadelphia than it is to go into Manhattan and watch games at Madison Square Garden. So they're going to be in the building today. I think at much less numbers, obviously, but that'll be a good dynamic today of hopefully 90% Flyer fans and 10% Ranger fans and – You'll have a good, just a great atmosphere for this game. This is, see, this is what's fantastic about this year. It is February 24th. We are one week away from the month of March. Trade deadline hasn't gotten here. Flyers have pieces other teams want. Flyers are in a playoff position. Rangers are top of the division, have won nine straight. And you got a game today that means a whole S ton. I mean, how awesome is that? And the crowd and the building is going to be just rocking coming up today. I am so pumped up for this game to just get in there and feel the vibe of what is going on. This today may feel like the official return. The in-person vibe of the Flyers has returned. We've seen so many steps this year, whether it was that Calgary game a few months back at home, That was a really good game. We've seen some really good home performances this year against Vancouver, uh, against Winnipeg, against Dallas, that 5-1 win to win five straight games. Probably the most dominant performance of the Flyers the entire season. But today it's different. Today's different than a game against Calgary. Today it's different than a game against Winnipeg or Dallas or whoever, St. Louis or those other teams, even when Connor McDavid comes to town or Edmonton, or this is one of those days that only a few relative pieces of chemistry can create. Only a really meaningful game against the Penguins can come to this level with players like Crosby and Malkin and Latang and playing for something. That may not be the case come tomorrow when the Flyers play Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh, but this is a game where top team in the division, the New York the stinking Rangers are in town and their fans are trying to invade the building and the Flyers are trying to solidify a playoff position. This is what it's all about. When you're talking about games in February, this is the creme de la creme. This is beautiful. And hopefully we're talking about a win and the Rangers nine game win streaks in the rear view. And it's a great performance for the Flyers and a great show for the fans and the home crowd goes home happy. That's what we're hoping for. We'll see what happens today. Not going to be an easy task. We'll see how the Flyers use their goaltenders. Will it be Sam Harrison today or Cal Peterson? You got to think each are going to get a game this weekend. I would go Harrison today. I go Harrison today, and I go Cal Peterson tomorrow. I don't overcomplicate. That's exactly what I do. Harrison gets to this game because the best team you're playing this weekend is definitely the New York Rangers. The inferior team is the Pittsburgh Penguins. I'm going with Arison today. That's just what I would do. Right now, the uh, Rangers sit at the top of the division with 79 points, 12 up on the Flyers. Each team's played 57 games. Flyers have a seven-point buffer between them and the Capitals and Devils and New York Islanders, who are all sitting at 60 points. Uh, Devils and Islanders only have one game in hand on the Flyers. Caps have two games in hand. Flyers are sitting in great, a dry, right in the driver's seat. Today, you got Flyers, Rangers. Ah. Uh, Enjoy the hockey today, everybody. All right, we'll break that one down tomorrow, and we'll preview 
Flyers Penguins. So join us then coming up on a brand new episode of Flyers Daily.